Hi, I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom, and today I'm going to talk about the loss of some rural ferries. Rural means roll on, roll off, car ferry, and I'm also going to talk about an improved damage stability method. A summary of the lecture. The inbuilt design faults of most rural ferries will first be described. The capsizing of the Herald of Free Enterprise will then be described. Next, the capsizing of the Donna Piles, Piles will be described. Finally, the sinking of the Stone will be described. Rural ferry instability. The Achilles heel of a typical rural ferry is its lower car deck. The car deck is a watertight deck with no internal watertight bulkheads. The car deck has door openings at both ends of the ship to allow the vehicles to drive on at one end, roll on at the departure port, and drive off at the other end, roll off at the arrival port. Rural ferry instability. The car deck is a large open space which allows easy movement of the vehicles. If a bow or stern door on the car deck becomes damaged or is left open, the car deck can become flooded. As the car deck is watertight, the water becomes trapped in the garage and will slush to one side. Flooding the car deck will cause the Roro ferry to capsize. In the case of the Herald of Free Enterprise, the water entered the car deck at a rate of about 300 tons per minute. Thus, this caused the Herald to capsize at about one and a half minutes. Not allowing, enough, not, not allowing enough time for an orderly evacuation. The rural ferry will always capsize if the primary cause of instability is due to water on the car deck. If the herald had capsized in deep water, it would have turned turtle. The herald capsized on March 6, 1987 on a sandbank and lay on its side. The Herald suffered a loss of 193 people. There were 351 survivors. The number of fatalities would have been more if the Herald capsized in deep water. A video will now be shown of a method of improving the damage stability of rural ferries. The video was adapted by Carl T. F. Ross. Hello, I'm Bethany Hughes. Welcome to Discovery Today, bringing you the latest in the world of science and technology. Now, if you're wondering about this headset, I'll tell you more in a few moments. First, in today's program, Bethany has on from Zeebrugger, the battle to make car ferries safer. The dummy helping doctors save lives in the operating theatre. Why the old World War II ducks back on the water. And this headset, it's just arrived in Britain. The makers claim it could replace the laptop. Here's what I'm looking at now. I've got a small screen just an inch from my eye. Is it going to be the future of personal computers? More of the headset later. March the 6th is the 13th anniversary of the sinking of the car ferry, the Herald of Free Enterprise. It happened close to Zeebrugge, just off the coast of Belgium. The ship went over in a matter of seconds. For the survivors, the families of the victims and the ferry companies themselves, the controversy over ferry safety has raged ever since. But a British scientist claims it's very simple to adapt the ferries to make them much safer. In 1987, the British ferry, Herald of Free Enterprise, capsized when water flooded into the main bulkhead area. In 90 seconds, she was on her side. A sandbank prevented the ship from turning fully upside down. Still, 193 people lost their lives. We fell down to the other side of the boat, and people were falling on top of me. It just happened so quickly, and the water came so quickly. As a result, a new standard was brought in, stating that newly built ferries have to incorporate more safety features. But it gave the ferry companies until 2002 to improve their older ships. Most remain unaltered. Maurice de Rohan lost his daughter and son-in-law in the Herald of Free Enterprise disaster. Since then, he's been campaigning for 13 years to improve the basic design of car ferries. The Herald went down because the ship was wrongly designed. Uh, it was poorly operated. 
uh, people were indifferent to safety. And so I feel that their lives were lost unnecessarily. Modern European ferries built since the tragedy are safer than they were, but most car ferries have a large undivided car deck which is easy to load cars onto and can hold the greatest number of vehicles. However, it leaves the ship vulnerable if water starts to flood in, causing the boat to lose its balance. A disaster can happen within minutes. This feature remains even in the most modern vessels. Professor Carl Ross believes his scale model can demonstrate how to make the car deck much safer. The design weakness of the conventional ferry is that if you get water on the car deck, it sloshes over to one side and, and causes the vessel to capsize within a few minutes. Just like this model of the Herald of Free Enterprise. A modified version of the vessel shows much greater stability. And you can see how much more stable it is, how much more resistance it's got to capsize. See, it soon bounces back again. And this, of course, is the passive case. We found that this vessel capsized, it took five times longer to capsize than the conventional vessel. The modification is simple. Longitudinal bulkheads underneath a perforated car deck prevent incoming water sloshing from side to side. Professor Ross says his design would cost just two million pounds to fit to older existing ferries currently in use. But the industry remains skeptical. One of the downsides of the scheme is that it might restrict access and freedom of movement on the car deck. Of course, that is one thing that we wish to avoid. Therefore, the measures which we have and are and will be implementing will seek to minimise the operational constraints on the vessel while, I must stress this, maintaining the very high levels of standards to which we have always operated. Professor Ross's idea would reduce the car deck headspace by about half a metre, but he's convinced the companies are missing an important breakthrough in safety. We more or less found we've got practically um, an unsinkable rural ferry. Thirteen years on, for those who lost relatives in the 1987 tragedy, the fact that the scientific community is still looking for answers is a sign of hope. I think what's encouraging is the fact that people are still thinking about the problem and that they're looking to find ways to improve these ships, which are fundamentally wrong. I mean, they are floating rafts, as somebody described them. Uh, and there needs to be uh, an improvement in standards. This is a drawing of the Herald. You can see there, on the outside, there's a section cut away where you can see the cars and other vehicles parked. The loss of the Herald. In the case of the Herald, on leaving the port of Zeebrugge, her bow doors were left open to vent the car deck from fumes left by the recently garaged motor vehicles. This enabled seawater to enter the garage to the bow doors and the vessel went full steam ahead. This caused the vessel to heel over to one side so that part of the bow doors opening went further underwater. This caused the water to enter at an even faster rate and the vessel turned in an arc of a circle. The centrifugal effect of this, together with the increases of the ingress of water, caused the vessel to heel over even further and decrease the radius of its turning circle. The vessel then capsized in about 90 seconds on a sandbank, partly due to the centrifugal effect of turning in a tight circle and partly due to the slushing effects of water on the car deck. Fortunately, the Herald capsized in shallow waters. If it had capsized in deep waters, it would have turned turtle. It is upside down with an even larger loss of life. It would, have, it would not have sunk, though. This is the capsized Herald. The loss of the Donna Paz. The Donna Paz was lost on December 20, 1987 in the Philippines. 
most of the passengers were going on their Christmas holidays. 4,376 people lost their lives. There were 24 survivors, two of them being crew. The Donna Pass collided with the tanker Vector. The Vector was carrying gasoline, kerosene and diesel. After collision, both vessels were engulf engulfed in flames. The sea surrounding both vessels was effectively alight. The daughter pilots had no facilities for radio communications. The vessel was overloaded by about 2,882 passengers. The daughter pass, pass capsized before it sank. Many of the survivors were badly burned. The loss of life on the Donna Paz was the worst in rural ferry disasters. The loss of the Donna Paz was not widely reported in the Western press, presumably because its demise happened in the East and did not involve any, many, if any, Westerners. This is the Estonia, which was built by the Germans and sold to Estonia of the Estonia. There we have the plans of them, the deck six at the bottom, seven, eight, nine, ten. And down there we have the tank plan at the bottom, deck naught, deck one, deck two, deck three, deck four, and deck five. And a garage was between deck two and deck four. So deck two and deck three were arranged for the garage with the car stayed. You notice that on the center line of the ship you have the uh, stairwells, more or less on the center line of the ship, the stairwells on deck two and deck three, and deck one was uh, had house passengers, deck naught, which is below deck one, had the uh, sauna and the uh, swimming pool. The Estonia's route was planned from Tallinn in Estonia to Stockholm in Sweden, and she sank about midway through her voyage. The Estonia sank on September 28, 1994, off the coast of Finland. 852 people lost their lives, and there were only 137 survivors. After the Estonia took water on board, she heeled over to 50 degrees starboard. This, of course, prevented people from deck number one, which was one, one deck below the the, the watertight car deck, deck two, from, from getting moving upwards to escape, because the angle, the 50 degree angle, was was too steep. But after a few minutes, she returned to the upright position with an angle of heel of about 15 degrees to starboard, and this allowed the trapped passengers on deck one to escape up. This enabled many passengers through to get dressed and climb upwards in an only manner, including those on deck number one, which was one deck below the watertight car deck. This was not possible early because of the large angle of heel of the damaged vessel. The lower car deck was deck number two. It was a watertight deck. After this, the vessel started to roll over at about one degree per minute, and it capsized and sank in 40 minutes. The visa covering the ramp bow door had been ripped off. The Joint International Accident Commission, namely the JAIC, said that after the visa came off, the watertight ramp door at the bow was breached, the car deck was flooded and the vessel sank. The next video will show the JAIC's version of why the Estonia sank.
experiments carried out at the University of Portsmouth have found that if the car deck gets flooded, the vessel always capsizes in a few minutes. It does not sink in 40 minutes. Additionally, surveys of the sunken vessel have found that the watertight ramp door is still closed. Whereas the, the previous video showed that the watertight ramp door opened, but the survey of the sunken vessel shows the watertight ramp door is still closed. The JAIC said that whereas the ramp door is closed at present, it opened and later shut. However, before the departure of the vessel, the ramp door was not watertight, and to seal it, the crew stuffed a mattress between the ramp door and the housing, and housing. As the mattress is still stuffed in place in the ramp door and its housing of the sunken vessel, this door could never have opened and then shut. So what caused the visit to be ripped off? It is my belief that after the vessel took water on board and the vessel partially righted itself, it must have turned in a very tight circle of starboard to right itself. This turning the tight circle caused, together with a large angle of heel at the same time, caused large transverse hydrodynamic force on the visa so that it was ripped off. There you can see the visa's lock, and you can see that, uh, the, that the visa's lock, and you can see that uh, the, the lug has been bent by a sideways force, not a vertical force. There we have the ramp door and visa. The ramp door is shown in red. The visa is in front of it. The ramp door was a, a watertight door. And all, although the visa came off, um, it's debatable whether the ramp door opened or shut. There we have some diagrams of the ramp door and the visa. On the left is a view from the side. On the right is a view from aft to forward. And on the bottom is a plan view. Now, the Estonia had 18,000 cubic meters of airspace trapped under its car deck. Remember, its car deck was a watertight deck. Thus, it should not have sunk due to the ingress of water on its car deck, as it would have required about 18,000 tons of water on its car deck to sink it. The Estonia would have capsized and turned turtle with less than 2,000 tons of water on its car deck. It would then have floated upside down and not sank. Additionally, the number of surviving passengers on deck number one was disproportionately large. Remember, this deck was one deck below uh, the watertight car deck, deck number two. This should not have been so because deck number one was one deck below the car deck. The reason why so many deck number one passengers survived was because they discovered water on deck number one in the early stages of the disaster. Thus, they were aware of the ingress of water on deck number one very early on in the disaster. How did water enter deck number one when the car deck immediately above it was a watertight car deck? Some people believe that the water found on deck number one had come down the stairwells from the watertight car deck above it. But the stairwells were the sent line of the ship. If the vessel had heeled to its starboard side, how could the sea water have flowed upwards to the sent line of the ship? This phenomenon defines Newtonian physics. Some of the passengers believe that the vessel sank by the bow, but some of the crew believe that the vessel sank by the stern. Some of the crew on first being rescued said that the vessel sank by the bow. Later they changed their minds. Why is there this discrepancy? Now here you have some plans, drawn cross-section, drawn by Anders Bokman, the book published by him. On the left, you see deck, you see that the car deck is between deck number two and deck number four. And on the right, you see if you get 2,000 tons of water, Anders, Anders Bokman found that the vessel, the, the Estonia healed by 34 degrees list, and if it took if it went to that angle, you can see the water there is drawn shaded. How could that water have flown upwards and come down the car deck to deck number one? What should have happened was that the Sonia should have capsized upside down 
with the 18,000 cubic meters of airspace trapped in its bottoms, which is now on the top, as shown by that diagram there. And as you notice, the Bolson and the Bolson's mate were friends. They survived the disaster and later worked together again. After the disaster, the boat was shot dead, the boatswain's mate. Why did he do this? On board the stricken vessel was a training master. He was being trained to captain one of the ferries on this route. He survived the disaster but has now gone missing. Where's the training master? Other surviving crew members have also gone missing. Where are they? The survey vessel found three bodies on the bridge. What were these people doing on the bridge when the vessel was sinking? Remember, it took 40 minutes to sink. The three countries involved would not allow any more survey vessels to inspect the wreck. Instead, they want to encase the wreck in concrete. Why do they want to encase the wreck in concrete when this has never been done to any other wreck before? A component of the visa's locks was retrieved from the wreck. Examination of this component in the laboratory may have decided whether or not the visa's locks were faulty. However, the helicopter pilot retrieving this component dropped it into the sea because he thought that it was too heavy for the helicopter to move. However, the ship's bell was retrieved by a helicopter, despite the fact that the bell was heavier than the lost component of the visa's locks. It is the author's belief that the Estonia was whole below the boat line, and this was why it sank and did not capsize. Just prior to the Estonia's final departure, a sauna was fitted to its starboard side, just forward of the midships. This was fitted on deck number note which was below deck number one, and deck number one was below the watertight car deck, deck number two. There may be a problem here. There are numerous conspiracy theories associated with the singing of this vessel. These can be found on the web. If the vessel were hold near the sauna, which was below the waterline, as some experts have suspected, the vessel would have sunk by the bow. If water had entered the car deck and the vessel were held below the water line, the vessel would have stunk, sunk by the stern. However, if the vessel were not held, it would have capsized and floated just like the Herald, except that it would have been upside down because it was in deep waters. Conclusions. The Herald capsized but did not sink. The Donopass capsized before it sank. The Stony capsized before it sank. The primary cause of loss of the Estonia could not have been due to the ingress of water on the car deck because the Estonia did not capsize and then float. Although the visa had been ripped off, the watertight ramp door had remained closed and the mattress stuffed in the watertight ramp door in its housing prior to departure of the vessel is still in place of the sunken vessel. As the vessel sank in 40 minutes, it must have been held below the waterline. Additionally, how did water flow onto deck number one when it was below the watertight car deck? Remembering that the stairwells were in the center line of the ship. The sunken vessel is lying on its starboard side some 80 meters below the surface. The starboard side has not been examined extensively because of its inaccessibility. The loss of life due to rural ferry accidents in the UK waters must be put into perspective. It is in single figures per year since the last World War. The loss of life in the UK due to people falling out of bed is about 99 people per year. References. Anders Bokman wrote this book. Very interesting. A lot of facts in it. And you can get, I think you can download it free off the web now. And Nigel Ling wrote the study of the Edit on Ferry Safety. Very interesting letter. Published in the Naval Architect in May 1996. And the final report of the Estonia in 1997, you can get this free off the web as well.